Hey crew, how are you? You okay? Hope everybody's safe in these ongoing strange times. So wherever you are in the world, hope you're okay. So autumn, probably one of my favorite times of the year, along with spring, but autumn precedes winter. And for the first time in the three years we've had the boat, we decided to get the central heating sorted out. So there's a quick little history of our central heating. So we had a Mikuni MX40 when we moved on the boat. It never worked very well. Um, not sure why. I'm not very good with mechanics and things. We got it serviced. Um, then the the radiators system needed flushing. Um, we stuck with the stove. So for the last um, two winters, we've managed with just the stove, um, trying to keep it in overnight, which is fine. You can do that. But, so this year, Corona, Shell working at home, at a standing desk, in front of the burner. We needed to do something. So, leap forward. We got the um, radiator system flushed whilst we are having the boat blacked by Paul. We um, fired up the Makuni once. It worked once. I don't know why I screwed up. Hang on, let's go and get the kettle. Ooh. So she found it once, seemed to work okay once. And then the next time we tried to fire up, um, there was an awful lot of white smoke. And there was diesel dripping from the bottom of the unit. Which is never good, is it? You don't want that, do you? So, yeah. We asked our engineer to come have a look, he uh, took the unit out, took it to his workshop and discovered that the air motor housing had cracked. Now we're not sure why, um, obviously a build up of pressure of some sort. So Makuni. Now Makuni um, used to do uh, water heaters for narrow boats and some boats still have them on as ours did. But when you reach the point where you need a new part, such as an air motor, for instance, um, yeah, there, there are none. Makuni themselves have got some parts for the MX-40, but not, not the air motor housing. So there was um, extended searches on Google and just could not find anything. Then I stumbled upon a Makuni engineer advert on eBay. So I got in touch with him. He didn't have any, um, any of the parts, but he did suggest that there was a Chandler's in Coventry that might. So I rang those guys and <sighs> So this got us thinking, did we really want to scratch around the bottom end of the internet looking for an air motor housing? Were we going to be confident that once we had that part that it wouldn't break down again and require another part that was unavailable? And so on and so on. So the decision was made, we're going to go with a new heater. So their options were Webasto, well known for heaters in boats. Urbispatcher, well known for heaters in boats. Planar, not so well known. Um, dry heat, so it's a blown air heating system, typically used in yachts. Or a cheap Chinese diesel knockoff of the planar. 
So those are the four things that we looked at. And we kind of quickly ruled out the blown air systems. Although that would have worked well with the stove, one end of the boat, and the blown air, the other end of the boat. We have got radiators fitted. So we've got four radiators on the system. And with the Webasto and the Herbispatcher, once it was on, it would also heat our hot water. Yeah, that's the system that we want. It's all in place. It's literally plug and play with the existing fixtures and fittings. So then it was down to Webasto, otherwise known as Webby, or Herbispatcher, otherwise known as Ebby. Let's do Webby versus Ebby. And we'll use five criteria. Well, this is the five criteria that I used. So the criteria was, number one, ease of use. Two, reliability. Three, price. Four, noise. And five, maintenance. You giggled in the middle. <laughs> yeah, because I had to have a sneaky look. <laughs> Number one, ease of use. It's uh, equal result. They're both easy to use. Literally, press the button. Let's go. <laughs> Two, it's a webby win. So the Webasto can operate within a voltage range. So therefore, if you're out and your batteries are a bit worn down, you'd still be able to kick in with the Webasto. Herbispatcher, it needs to be at, um, I think it needs to be above nine volts. The technical stuff, it doesn't matter. It matters that you need full batteries to power the thing up, which makes it less reliable than Webby. So it's a Webby win. Two, reliability is a Webby win. Three, price. Again, it's an equal result. You're probably looking at full unit and install between 1800 and 2000 pounds. So, yeah, nothing in it really. Just look for your best deal, look for the best person to install. Um, obviously, we had a lot of the um, infrastructure, is that right? Infrastructure in place, so it was literally a plug and play with some slight changes. So yeah, it's a drawn result, number three. So noise wars, number four, noise. It's a webby win. Now, I did, I did do quite a lot of research, um, which is unusual for me, because usually I'm just like, bull in a china shop, let's just go. Um, but of all the things that I've read, um, it wasn't necessarily that Webby was quieter, but it was the fact that Ebby, the Herbispatcher, was noisy. Um, and that was pretty much across the board. There was the odd person that was like, oh, I like my, I like my Ebby. But on the whole, the, um, the result was that Webby was quieter as a unit, a whole unit in operation than the Herbispatcher. So that makes number four, noise, another Webby win. So five, final, maintenance. Now I've gone pretty much solely on the advice of our engineer, Paul, at um, PIW, Narrowboats Limited. Um, he explained that the Webby unit was pretty much just like three main parts. And if there was a problem with one of those parts, you can just swap it out via warranty or you, you know, later on down the line, you just buy, so for instance, the pump is a little separate unit. So you just replace the pump unit 
all the um, glow plug and everything, the ignition system is all one unit, so you just replace that. Whereas the um, Herbispatches, very similar to the Makuni, where it had lots of different parts that needed, that you could replace, but you'd need to strip down the whole unit, and anyway. So I'm not entirely confident that I'd be able to do it, but I'm, you know, maybe with a little bit of uh, YouTube knowledge, the Wabasto seems a lot easier to work on going forward and maintain. So it's another Webby win. So number five, maintenance, it's a Webby win. So we went for the Herbispatcher. <laughs> So yeah, we obviously went for the Webasto. So I'll go and uh, come with me into the engine room and I'll show you the setup. So not sure whether you can see that or not, but that's the, uh, the diesel filter, fuel filter. So that's the actual pump, which is that slight tapping sound. Exhaust, obviously. Um, air intake, and that's it. Is your hot water that goes to the chlorifier in the bathroom, and then this is what travels through the radiators. So yeah, awesome bit of kit. As you can tell, it's not that loud, is it? Might seem quite loud, actually. Not sure. But anyway, yeah. That is our new Webasto heater. And yeah, we are very happy at the touch of a button. It's amazing. Watch this. And that is the heating on click of a switch <laughs> yeah so our, our unit is a Webasto Thermo Top Evo water heater um, the only thing I would say is that the unit itself is standard across the motor industry and um, other other um, applications so the one thing you do need if you're installing in a yacht or a narrowboat is the marine fitting kit. So just bear that in mind if you're looking for a, you know, a second hand unit and you come across one, you will need the marine fitting kit with it. But yeah, um, we'll leave the last word to the lizard who I think has been enjoying some very toasty toasty days on the boat while she's been working this week because every time I've come home it's been roasting in here um, although funnily it's it's never on when I get home weird <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if she can explain that I have nothing to say no comment <laughs> but I'm nice and warm it's lovely <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.